Assalamu alaikum. Uh, welcome back. This is Anesthesia with Dr. Hassan, and today is the day of the initiation of my first official video. As I said, that I am always going to talk about very basic things that everybody needs to know related to my field. So today I have come up with the topic that I was taught on my very first day and second day and third day and fourth and final day, fifth day of my orientation and that was protocols for the management and handling of drugs. Uh, there, are there are a couple of things that come to my mind uh, and just to cite an example, uh, at the very first, second and third day of my orientation I was taught, I was asked uh, to learn these protocols by heart and then go on to teach them to my juniors as well and tell them to my consultants one by one to all of the consultants that available and there were like four or five of them at the same time so yes i did that that exemplifies and explains um, the importance of this topic i cannot emphasize it more more than that this is a very important topic so let's go with it it is very simple and easy to explain i have some i have some things with props with me uh, which are going to help me uh, make you understand this topic in a in a bit colorful way and I'll try to do it as simple as I can. I'm going to keep all these things uh, very simple. So first of all, the thing that comes to my mind is that this protocol is not just meant for anesthesiologist. No, this is meant for anesthetists. Uh, this is important for healthcare workers that deal with drugs. This is important for anesthesia technicians, anesthesia technologists, uh, the staff members, the nursing staff that are operating in the OR, outside the OR, who are managing these drugs. And this can be taken uh, as a wholesome as uh, protocols um, which are important for everyone, whether they're related to my field or not, but they should be followed for the um, and, and I'll tell you why, why they're important. So first of all, the first question that comes to our mind is why these protocols are set into notion. Uh, why these protocols are important and are being followed. So it was seen that a lot of uh, mistakes were made while with the administration of wrong medication and the administration of wrong doses of medications. So two things in mind, wrong medications and wrong doses of medications. And they are obviously accidental. Nobody wants uh, to inject people with wrong medicine. You know, just so. so that's not the point. Uh, the point is that um, uh, the mistakes that we make uh, by accidents and these protocols are set in motion so that they can be avoided. All right. Um, how has this protocol helped us in improving as an uh, as a medical professional or an anesthesiologist it has uh, decreased the incidence of mistakes to almost nil at least in my department i have uh, seen evidences uh, from different hospitals case reports uh, uh, summarizing the context of uh, administration of wrong drugs uh, they are very far and few now nowadays because all the hospitals have their own protocols uh, which are actually similar to each other most of the times uh, and they are set into play uh, to prevent these mistakes from happening so this has decreased the incidence of wrong administration or bolus or dosing of drugs and the um, and the second uh, and the point which I was mentioning that all of this is evidence based our uh, hospital and my anesthesiology department uh, is well versed with the collection of uh, data and uh, analysis we have uh, uh, we have adverse event registers and we have uh, reports for uh, uh, critical incidents as well relating the wrong, relating such events and that has decreased to almost nil in our department just because of the evolution of these protocols so we are going to study these protocols in six steps they are very simple steps um, and i'm going to explain them one by one with the help of props that i have available as much as i can so the first thing that should be remembered is step number one all drugs should stay inside their containers when they are not to be used all right uh, not to be used can be taken in a lot of forms uh, most important is that um, i have a drug and i don't want to use it uh, this that should not be placed the impule should not be placed out of outside that box on a trolley no that's not how you do it so we have multiple drugs placed on our um, the trolleys the emergency trolleys the trolleys for uh, drugs and they should be kept inside their boxes so that we know that this impule belongs to that uh, box and it is safe it is not going to be mixed with other drugs so they should stay inside their container at all times when not in use number one all right number two 
uh, when to be used they should be taken outside their boxes the impules and they should be um, confirmed by two people one of them should be an anesthesiologist the other person can be any health care professional from some other department as well but they should be related to health care profession all right um, the third one is when they are to be used uh, they should be taken out one impule or one drug at a time and filled up in the syringes this step is i feel that this, this that this step is very important why um, there was this uh, i'm going to cite an example there was this colleague of mine dr asad he's now a trainer uh, and an, a consultant in um, saudi arabia uh, i remember him saying during the first year of my training that um, a good anesthetist is the one who keeps his trolley uh, clean uh, the cleaner an anesthetist is on the trolley the cleaner he is in the mind so by clean he meant uh, that the drugs should be properly placed they should be assembled in lines so that you are clear in your head that i know where my drugs lie uh, so when they are taken out uh, they should be drawn one by one for example i'm preparing for a um, cesarean section under general anesthesia so i am going to use a lot of drugs what sh should be used is as follows so you should uh, take out first drug let's say propofol so i'm going to take out this impule of propofol just break it uh, take the syringe of propofol and then move on to succinylcholine and then i'm going to fill in the succinylcholine and then i'm going to move towards taking out the third drug uh, this atracurium and then um, uh, the muscle relaxant and then i'm going to uh, use another drug so they should be taken out one at a time it should not be like the like i'm going to take out propofol and succinylcholine and atracurium and uh, dexamethasone and centrosinone and then i'm going to place them all on the trolley at the same time and then i'm going to break all of them and then i'm going to spill, fill this no it just messes up your mind i feel that the chances of me administering or filling up the syringe with the wrong drug increases many fold if i do this habit so this has been set by my by my department to take out the syringes and then use one by one fill them and then um, i'm going to tell you the rest of the later but however they should be it, this process should be done one by one 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 at a time all right the third point uh, so, so it's this is the third point the fourth point is that color-coded labeled syringes should be used with dilutions mentioned on the stickers this is uh, a universal practice uh, it's in use in a lot of hospitals in pakistan and abroad as well uh, i'm going to show you this so so let's say that um, I borrowed this uh, impule of epinephrine from my pharmacy. So let's say that this is an impule. It was in a box. I took it out. Uh, I showed it to my uh, technologist that I'm going to use this impule of epinephrine. Look, this is an impule of epinephrine. I showed him the expiry date and I read it as well. So, so there was this portion of expiry date as well that you are obviously you are uh, supposed to see the expiry of all the impules that uh, the drugs that we are going to use. So I showed him the expiry of the drug and then... Um, and then uh, I'm going to fill it in a syringe that is color coded and most of the times like 99 almost all of the times the color codes are universal uh, let's see let, if you can see this this so this is a syringe it's an inverted because because I am using the front cam so this is an impure this is a syringe of epinephrine I hope that you can see it we uh, we write the dates as well so this is uh, 2nd of March today 2nd of March 2020 and, I, and and look at this dilution I wrote the dilution so it's 100 microgram so this the the dilution that I'm going to use is 100 mic 100 microgram this is the first dilution one milligrams of epinephrine so I withdrew it uh, in and fill it in this syringe and the dilution that I'm going to use is 100 micrograms per ml of this dilution the drug that I'm going to use I can make other dilutions as well like 10 micrograms or 1 microgram per ml so that I know and understand that this is a syringe I have this syringe this has um, these many mics of this drug so color coding this purple color is universal this that is for epinephrine so we are going to use this i can see it from a mile that this is a purple drug with a black um, head and this is going to be an epinephrine so this all of these steps that we are doing these reduce the chances of administration of wrong drugs and doses 
so wrong drug prevention epinephrine color coding wrong dosing administration i have written the dose 100 mics per ml this would help me uh, making this will help me avoiding the mistake of wrong administration of drug as well as the dosing all right so and these color codes are uh, um, very specific uh, you know in a, sometimes the practice is uh, practices and colors might be different in uh, different setups so we have this uh, i'm going to show you so we have atropine in uh, green color we have cis atracurium in the red color we have medazolam in yellow color we have oxytocin in white color so these are they will help me identify the drugs in a much better and safe way so moving on uh, we are through four points the fifth point and i personally feel i feel people may agree or disagree with me but i personally feel that this is the point that is the key step to the administration not the recognition but the administration of the right quantity of drug i feel that this is the key point so what is this point so this point says uh, that uh, before administration of a particular dose of a particular drug it should be spoken out loud so my consultant asked me to give uh, 30 milligrams of uh, atracurium or 10 milligrams of cisatracurium and i am on the side of the patient with the syringe and uh, with the uh, with the IV cannula and uh, I speak out loud that all right sir I'm going to administer 10 milligrams of uh, cisatracurium 10 milligrams cisatracurium is in and that is it so I have spoken out loud and my consultant or my trainee agrees with me that yes this is the message that was forwarded to me and I am going to complete the loop and sir I am going to give this quantity of dose this quantity of dose given all right so i feel that this that this is a very keystone point that uh, i have given this dose so that the loop is completed that he asked that you asked me to give this quantity of this drug i'm going to give this quantity of this drug and this is given so i feel that uh, the completion of the loop is very important and um, i feel this this is like the key step in the administration in the administration of the right drug the right quantity of drug and uh, this takes me to my final point uh, the concept the concept of an empathy or a bin um, that all impules that are used should be thrown away into a proper uh, tray or a can or uh, an empty box that is placed just close to all the drugs uh, why because uh, so that all drugs that are that have been administered uh, should be held accountable so they can be counted that we have given these drugs and even in worst case scenarios in case by accident or emergency you have given somebody has given a wrong quantity of a drug or a wrong admin you have administered a wrong drug as a whole so they can be um, recognized and uh, treatments proper treatments can be taken so if there and the uh, and the tray should be discarded after the completion of all the procedures the drugs the empty um, impules should be thrown away so that they are not mixed with the case of the previous one or the previous one so uh, if i accidentally administer a wrong drug i can recognize the drug in my empty can uh, and can uh, manage the patient in a much better way because I feel that obviously mistakes can be made by anyone but most important is saving a life and uh, keeping your patient safe at all times this is what anesthesia is all about it's not about it's all, obviously it's about being smart but um, my, there is this mentor I have and uh, he always tells us that uh, I do not want you to be a very smart anesthetist I want you to be a safe anesthetist safe anesthesia is the core of our practice that we are tra being trained for here um, in at least in my setup uh, i hope that you like my video uh, i am really looking forward to having a feedback from you guys why because feedback uh, evolves us evolves all the teachers we know our um, shortcomings and it helps us improve ourselves so i'm looking forward to your feedback uh, uh, just to so to, um, just before closing, I I want to sum up all these six points. 
um, just for the sake of understanding and learning so point number one all drugs should stay inside their um, boxes or cans at all times when not in used number two when they are to be used they can they should be taken out of the box and they should be <clears throat> and should be confirmed by two people one of them should be an anesthesiologist number three when uh, they are to be used they should be taken out one by one and filled in syringes and number four color coding and the concept of uh, uh, writing the dilutions that you are going to make on the stickers number five uh, the dose that is about to be given should be spoken out loud or if not out loud at least it should be discussed uh, once or twice before um, administration and number six the impulse that you have used should be discarded so that they can be accounted for and in case of any emergency if you have given a wrong drug uh, you can manage the patient in, uh, in an effective way all right that sums up my video and do like it do share it with your friends and colleagues this is not just for anesthesiologists this is for all the medical healthcare professions related to drugs um, thank you so much uh, see you another time follow like and subscribe take care